Hey, it's Ash. I'm the vegan neuropsychologist and this video is about more about my social media detox. So if you saw my last video, then you will know that I'm undertaking a seven day complete abstinence from all social networking sites, which includes Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. And yes, I understand the irony that you are watching this now on YouTube. The main reason I'm doing this is to assess the impact that social media has on my life, on my mental well-being and on my mood. So if you're interested in knowing more about mental health, personal development, and I also talk about veganism and parenting, then make sure you hit the subscribe button below. So in the last few days, since being off social media, I've really been thinking about what is it that makes social media so appealing to us, but yet can contribute so much to our discontent and our dissatisfaction with life. In other words, why is social media so bad for us? Now, I have to say this, I don't think social media is inherently bad, which I'll explain in a moment. However, I do think that in excess, it can cause more problems than it solves. And there's been a lot of research done on the impact of social media on mood and general well-being and emotional health. And by and large, it seems that the more we use social media, the less happy we become. So there's two main things I want to focus on in this video. Um, they're both related concepts, actually. One is FOMO, the fear of missing out, and the other one is social comparison, and they have a lot to do with each other. So social comparison is something that we do all of the time anyway. Whenever we're interacting with people, we have a natural tendency to compare ourselves with others, particularly on a dimension that we happen to be speaking about. So if we're talking about our fitness abilities, then we're going to be comparing our fitness with that of the person we're speaking with. The same goes with writing prowess, maybe cooking skills, maybe reading abilities, just any number of skills, you name it. That's our natural tendency. It's one that is inborn. Um, it's something that we're wired to do. And it's not inherently a bad thing because it's something that's evolved in us. It's a it's a neurobiological wiring that's evolved over millennia to keep us safe. We needed to compare ourselves with others in the past, in pre-modern times, to make sure that we were measuring up with the tribe and that we didn't have any weaknesses or any perceived weaknesses that would make us liabilities to our survival or to the survival of the tribe. So this basic wiring still exists, but the problem now is that we have so many avenues for social comparison, because it used to be that we would compare ourselves to others with the people that we knew in real life. We would meet someone in the street, maybe it would be a family member or a friend or a coworker, but now we are literally being bombarded with so much information about so many other people's lives the number of social comparisons we're making is skyrocketing. Uh, I think about it as being like at a party. Maybe there's a hundred people at this party. And when we attend a party, we can maybe have a decent conversation with a handful of people. But imagine if you were Facebook friends or Instagram following, or following on Instagram, all of those 100 people, you would get an insight into their lives, all of their lives. So it's a far greater number of social comparisons than we ever would make in real life. The virtual world uh, facilitates this. Social media also facilitates unfair comparisons because as many of you know, online we can put on a best face, we can put our best foot forward. We're not going to be showing our wrinkles and our cellulite and our crow's feet and we're not going to be talking about the failures and the stuff ups and the time that we tried to ask that cute guy or girl out and they said no. When we're on social media, it's our highlight reel. Whereas when we compare ourselves to people on social media, we're comparing our real lives with all of the, the inherent problems of life compared to this sort of shiny, perfect image that we seem to think that people online have. And obviously that's not the case, but, but social media really facilitates this. So what's happening is we're making so many more comparisons with others than we have ever before. And the type of comparisons that we're making are very different to the ones in real life. The virtual world is obviously very different to real life. And when you put all of this together, it creates a tremendous amount of dissatisfaction, disharmony, maybe even feelings of worthlessness and helplessness and hopelessness. And all of these feelings can fuel depression and anxiety and even substance abuse disorders. So there was recently a um, national survey about health and well-being. I can't remember the exact name, but it was uh, it's an Australian based study. 
study and what it showed was that the that the incidence of depression and anxiety is ever increasing and in fact um, psychological distress is at its highest levels than it's been in the last five years. I think that's pretty telling. Now, it doesn't mean to say that social media is the cause of psychological distress or that removing social media is going to cure you of experiencing a psychological illness. However, what we do know is that feelings of depression and anxiety and even the clinical disorders, they're multifaceted. There's many, many inputs that can, many factors that can affect a person's experience um, and a person's mental well-being. And social media may well be one of those factors. In the last six days, I definitely feel an improvement in my overall sense of well-being. So I do feel like I'm more content in general and more fulfilled with the daily activities that I'm doing and the way that I'm trying to make this world a better place as opposed to comparing myself with others and lamenting about why I'm not as wealthy or successful or, or famous as they are. I also feel like I've been given a boost in my self-esteem and confidence. I feel, yes, more content with life but also more content with who I am and I feel more appreciative of the strengths that I have and even the weaknesses that I have. I think it's made me appreciate myself a little bit more and I never thought that going off social media for six days would have that effect on me but there you go. Now one thing I do want to say about social media I don't think it's inherently a bad thing. I don't think social comparison is a bad thing. Remember that social comparison is often what gives us the inspiration to improve and better ourselves. Maybe we learn about someone who is writing a book or writing a blog and that inspires us to, to do the same. Or maybe we learn about someone who's embarked upon a travel adventure type lifestyle and it inspires us to travel more or create more adventure in our life. Maybe we learn about someone who started a business and it inspires us to do the same. Or we might learn about someone who relocates every four months and has no fixed address and all of their belongings fit in one backpack or one suitcase. And maybe that inspires us and causes us to question question our belongings and whether we need to own so many things. So social media, social comparison, they're not inherently bad. They can definitely be useful, definitely be inspiring. But I do think that with the wealth of information that's available at our fingertips, it is very, very easy to slide down into the path of excess, excess social comparison, which is often not healthy and is leading to some of the problems we see today. So I'm going to end it there. I'd love to know what your thoughts are about social media, social comparison, FOMO, fear of missing out. Let me know. Drop me a comment below and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.